As the British entered Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, they were greeted by a scene of horror, depravity and hell on earth. The Holocaust was carried out in these complexes and behind the barbed wire fences, the worst evils of Hitler's Third Reich occurred. 60,000 people had been abandoned to fend for themselves amongst the dead bodies of prisoners who had perished to malnutrition and disease. But within the victims were a number of SS staff who carried out much of the crimes. Some even tried to hide within the survivors, however some came clean about their activities. Today we look at Karl Francho, an SS man who was involved in the kitchens of a number of different concentration camps. He was active at Auschwitz and also Belsen, and he, after the Second World War, was sentenced to death for his crimes. So join us today as we look at the justified execution of Karl Francho, the evil cook of Auschwitz. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Karl Francho was born in Brandenburg on the 5th of October 1912. He was married and had four children, and began his adult life working in the mines as a miner in his local area. When the Second World War broke out, he swapped the mines for the kitchens, and became a cook within the Wehrmacht in April 1940. He then joined the ranks of the SS as a cook, working in an SS kitchen in Poznan. At some point, Francho was transferred from Poznan to Auschwitz, where he first began to serve as a cook in a concentration camp, working in the officer's mess. He said at his trial that he worked in Auschwitz's kitchen as a chef in the officer's kitchens, along with 50 other officers, and once relayed how he saw other ranking SS members, such as Franz Hossler and Josef Kramer, eating the food he had prepared. Auschwitz over time transformed into a huge killing and forced labour centre, and as the camp grew, the resources which were needed also grew. There was a large network of different staff needed at Auschwitz, not just guards. To keep the camp moving and productive, there were a large amount of support staff brought in, including the cooks and the chefs. Eventually Auschwitz transformed into three main camps, the first, Auschwitz I, being the main labour element, with Auschwitz II Birkenau being the extermination centre, with finally Auschwitz III Monowitz being the slave labour element for the IG Farben, a huge German industrial conglomerate. At some point around January 1945, Francho was arrested and put inside the prison inside Auschwitz for 21 days, and was then sent along with a transport of SS men, who deserted to the Gross Rosen concentration camp, as Auschwitz was evacuated as the Red Army approached the complex. He then went to the Blechhammer, a subcamp of Monowitz, on another evacuation transport, and at some point he met Ansgar Pieschen, another cook, who would be executed for his role in the Holocaust. Following this, he was taken to Bergen-Belsen concentration camp around March 10th, 1945, to go and work. Many people, staff and prisoners were sent to Belsen, as it was closer to German lines, and the heartland, as the advancing Allies and Red Army swamped across different lands, and liberated different camps. When he arrived at Belsen, initially Franz Schoe did not have a position or a job, and he initially slept and had his meals in the SS mess hall, outside the camp, which was around 100 metres from the Commandant, Josef Kramer's office. He was told to accompany sick prisoners from the Nuengamme concentration camp to Belsen, and when he arrived he was given a job, working inside the women's camp, but then was arrested again, this time for 12 days, for leaving to see his wife without permission. After his release he began to work inside the kitchens at Bergen-Belsen. He said of them, There were about 68 prisoners working in number 3 cookhouse, in two groups, each did 8 hours. There were one or two more prisoners not counted amongst the real kitchen personnel. One Alfserin was in charge. He also said how many of the workers saw it as good work, and many of them were women, and his cookhouse he was overseeing fed 16,200 people daily, of which the ration was half a litre of coffee, a litre of soup for lunch and dinner, with bread sometimes. The cookhouse Francho oversaw fed mostly women, and he said how extra food was sent for the maternity home and pregnant women, and he claimed how his kitchen gave out most food. Now it's clear at Bergen-Belsen that during the final days of the camp, the situation was incredibly dire. There was very little food, if any, to go around, disease was rampant and rife, and because of this, death surrounded every corner. Prisoners were forced to share whatever scrap of food they had, and things became incredibly desperate. Much of the crimes that he was executed for revolved around his actions towards a number of prisoners, who in fact were caught stealing food. 
At the Belson trials, he was asked, You were accused of shooting a woman who was bending down to pick up a few potato peelings on the day before the British arrived. What have you got to say about that? He replied, On that day I was not in the camp at all. I would not dream of shooting a woman. I can explain why this accusation is against me, because when I prepared food for the hospitals, it was standing in front of the kitchens for hours without being fetched. Therefore I had lots of arguments with hospital staff, with Dr Bimco being the man who accused Francho. But the accusations against him would get even darker. He was accused by another prisoner of having shot around 50 prisoners after the British soldiers arrived, and he said, When the British came in, I was not at the camp any more. I went with my wife to Bergen, and we made ourselves ready to go away. I could have gone with her, but did not because of the love I had for the prisoners. Further accusations continued, as another lady accused him of shooting a friend of hers dead, along with wounding three further women. He was also accused of beating prisoners terribly, and shooting a Russian girl dead upon her arrival. Further accusations of Francho's crimes and his gun emerged, with him also allegedly shooting workers in his kitchen, and shooting a pregnant woman in the arm who later died. He admitted during his trial that he actually owned a pistol, but said he did not carry it inside the camp, or within the kitchen. He also testified against other members of staff, admitting that one guard regularly beat prisoners, and also said that beatings were a normal thing within the camps. He tried to maintain that he tried to stop the shootings of prisoners, however this wasn't founded, and it was alleged further that he shot prisoners even up to the day of liberation. Franchot was also criticised by others for the malnutrition inside of Belson, and the sorry state of affairs, and the prosecution questioned if he actually did any work in the kitchens, such was the dire situation. He did admit that rations he cooked in the kitchen were rather scarce, and not sufficient to cook for all of the prisoners, but he did try to turn evidence against the SS doctors, saying that it was possibly the fault of the medical staff that so many people died. Carl Franchot was arrested whilst inside Bergen-Belsen, and like all other SS camp staff, he was forced to transport the corpses and bury them in mass graves. Following the clean-up, he was placed on trial, and for his crimes was found guilty that he committed at Bergen-Belsen, despite being there only a short amount of time. It was found he shot prisoners, and despite pleading not guilty, he was sentenced to death. Interestingly, his friend Ansgar Pichon was also sentenced to death, after being found guilty of also shooting prisoners whilst inside Bergen-Belsen. Francho was transferred to Hamlin Prison to await his execution, and it was performed by Albert Pierpoint, the famous British executioner. Inside a number of cells the condemned found guilty in the Belsen trials were held, before a gallows with a simultaneous drop had been erected at the end of these cells, inside of an execution chamber. Before the execution, Pierpoint met with each of the condemned, with his assistant, to calculate the height and weight of each of them, in order to work out the drop needed to kill the criminals. Francho would have walked into the chamber, stepped onto the scales, and then had his height measured by Pierpoint, working out the drop needed to kill him. This method was aimed at quickly and efficiently dispatching the condemned war criminal. The execution of Francho and the other criminals took place on the 13th of December 1945 at Hamlin. The executions of the women were carried out first, before the condemned men were killed. He would have been led up the stairs of the gallows, and a cap was placed over his head by Pierpoint, or his assistant, before he was then quickly shuffled over the trap door, which Pierpoint had drawn a chalk X on the floor on. Within seconds of the noose being secured, he would have been left hanging, with the drop killing him. He was cut down and then his remains were cremated, and he was 33 when he was executed. It was clear that during the Belson trials that Carl Franchot had a barbaric and brutal streak inside of him, and he displayed this ruthless brutality that many of the SS members would exhibit within the concentration camps. He seems a figure that was lost at times within the SS system, being arrested a number of times for desertion, but also being forced to go to different camps. As the Second World War was lost for the German, it was clear how he wished to inflict misery onto people, shooting prisoners who had a chance of survival, as liberation loomed. He was a despicable man, and a horrific war criminal, whose execution could be considered to have been a justified one. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.